Right now I'm going to do a presentation on odds ratios and a quick overview of what we'll be going through. I'll give you a few quick examples of what, where you've seen odds ratios before, a definition of odds ratios. We'll calculate an example and give you an explanation of odds ratios. And finally, we'll give you a real life application of odds ratios. So where you might have seen odds ratios before, you might have seen them in sports. When you say maybe a team has a 3-1 to odds against them, or a dog race, the, do the particular dog you're looking at has odds of 50-1 to one against them. So what does that really mean, and where are they getting these numbers? Um, odds, first off, uh, what are odds? And odds are a representation of the likelihood of an event will, that an event will happen. So if you're calculating the, event, the odds for an event A, you will take the probability of A, and you'll divide that by the probability of not A, so 1 minus the probability of A. And similarly, for the odds against an event A, you'll take 1 minus the probability of A, and divide that by the probability of A. So here's an example for doing a dice roll, and we'll assume it's an even die. So we'll take the odds for getting a 6, and you'll take the probability of 6 and divide that by the probability of not getting a 6. So in a, on a dice, you'll have 1 6. So the probability of getting rolling a 6 is 1 out of 6. And you'll divide that by the probability of not, of not getting a 6, so 5 out of 6. And you'll get 1 fifth. So this means that you'll get 1 6 for every, the odds for this would mean that you're getting 1 6 for every not 6. And then you'll, similarly for an odd, because to calculate the odd, an odds ratio, you would need two odds to compare against. So the odds for getting an odd, you would again take the probability of an odd and divide that by the probability of a not an odd. And they have the same probability, one half. So I'd give you an odds, rate, an odds of one for getting an odd. So you'd get one odd for every not odd. <laughs> <laughs> So here's an <laughs> yes, it is. So an explanation of an odds ratio. To calculate your odds ratio for this, for these two examples, you have the odds of getting a six, which is one fifth, and divide that by the odds of not of getting an odd, which is one, and you get 0.2. So the meaning of this is you would say the odds of you getting a six are 0.2 times the size of the odds of getting an odd. So this is great, but what does this really mean and where can we use this? So, Brittany will talk to you about a real life example. Alright, so for an example, let's say a researcher is interested in finding out how many brain inju injuries did occur and did not occur during a motorcycle accident, and how many of them were wearing a helmet and were not wearing a helmet. So, this chart up here shows this information. So, the Find the odds ratio, we're first going to look at the odds of having a brain injury and not having a brain injury based on whether they were wearing a helmet. So first we're going to take the brain injury, which is 17, and divide it by the total number of accidents of people that are wearing helmets, which is 994, and we end up with 17. So then we're also going to look at individuals that were not wearing helmets, and we're going to take the number of individuals that had a brain injury, which was 97, and divide it by the total number of accidents of individuals that were not wearing helmets, which is 2015. So when we take 19 divided by 18, or I'm sorry, we take 97 over 1918, we get 0 0.05, or 0.0506. So to find the odds ratio, we're going to take the odds of brain injury for no helmet over the odds of brain injury for helmet. So we saw this on the previous slide. So we have 0 0.0506 divided by 0 0.0174. And this equals 2.91. So this means that the odds of brain injury in the no helmet groups are 2.91 times higher than the odds of brain injury in the helmet group. This was the summary that we talked about. So hopefully you guys know the definition of an odds ratio, how to calculate it, and now we can apply it to examples in the real world.